everyone. Welcome to another episode of Impact Today. We are Mark and Victoria Bowling, evangelists and teachers of the Word of God. We're so happy that you decided to join us today, and we have a power-packed episode ahead for you with teaching from God's Word that is going to change your life. So get ready to receive the Word of God. Grab a Bible and a notebook so you can take some notes and follow along. It's going to be powerful. We want to invite you to visit our website at globalimpactministries.com. There you can access every episode that we've ever made of this show, Impact Today. It will take you to our YouTube channel where you can subscribe to our channel. You can like and share our videos with your friends. Also, at our website, you can partner with our ministry. You can email us your prayer requests and your praise reports. We would love to hear from you. Today, we're going to be teaching on the lifestyle of faith. But before we get into that, I'd like to share a testimony from a recent trip that we took to Asia. We were ministering in a brick kiln. There were lots of people there, and after we shared the word, we began to lay hands on the sick and pray for people. Jesus said, these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Now, sometimes that recovery is instant and sometimes it's gradual. But the important thing is that when, hands, when you lay hands on someone, you believe Amen. and they believe. Believe what? That something's happening. Mm -hmm. That the power of God is going into that body and working and that we have a miracle. Amen. And so one of the common prayer requests in the brick kilns is for shoulder pain. Mm -hmm. And that's because, you know, the people are working physical, very physical labor for 13 to 16 hours a day mm -hmm. at all different ages. Of people, boys and girls, men and women were asking us, pray for my shoulders. I have shoulder pain. Well, <laughs> I just remember person after person after person, we lay hands on their shoulders. In the name of Jesus, we command this pain to go. We receive your healing power into this body now. You know, they would turn to walk away and I'd say, no, wait a minute. And I'd go like this, telling them, move your shoulders up and down. They would move their shoulders up and down and they would discover that all the pain is gone. Amen. Hallelujah. Person after person. Hallelujah. You know, if God made us, God can fix us. That's we right. need to have confidence in him that he will be faithful to his word. Amen. Now, the teaching today is about the lifestyle of faith. And in Hebrews chapter 10, in verse 38, we read, Now the just shall live, live by faith. They will live by their faith. You know, what does that show us? That shows us that faith isn't something we pull out in a crisis, only in a crisis. Mm -hmm. Faith is something that we live by day in and day out. Every day that goes by, we yes. are living in and walking in faith. So let's go to this teaching now um, from Mark. It's going to be good, and we'll see you right back here in a minute. Hello, friends. Welcome back to this series of lessons on the foundational doctrines of Christ. So excited that you're here with me. Uh, Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 and 2 says, Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. So, so far we've discussed the importance of sound doctrine. We've discussed the gospel message itself, Christ crucified, His death, burial, and resurrection, which leads into the very first foundation stone of these foundational doctrines, the milk of the word, the elementary principles of Christ. In that one, that first foundation stone is repentance from dead works. Coupled with that is faith toward God. As we discovered when the gospels presented to an unbeliever, their first response is to 
repent from dead works, but at the same time, they exercise faith toward God or in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Then we talked about repentance as a lifestyle to maintain and enjoy rich fellowship with the Father. We need to have a tender heart towards Him. And when we miss it, we need to be quick to repent. And we need to be quick to forgive others and quick to believe His Word. Now we're going to come back to faith toward God again from the perspective of being a believer in Christ. That someone who's already been born again and now we're learning to walk by faith and not by sight. In fact, that's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Hebrews 10, 38 says, The just shall live by faith. Well, how often are you alive, right? You, you live, you breathe uh, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And thus we should be walking or living by faith 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Faith is not something that you kind of pull out of the bag when you're in a crisis. It's a lifestyle in good times and in bad times. With that in mind, I want you to see a passage of Scripture that has blessed me over the years. It really opens things up to me. Uh, shows what kind of life you should be living, how you walk with the Lord. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7 says this, As, now notice those words, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. Let me repeat that. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. Rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Now, the part I really want, you, the, the whole passage is, is so powerful. But the part I want you to see is, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk. Well, how did you receive Christ Jesus the Lord? The answer to that question will be found in Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, let's see how an individual, how you received Christ Jesus as the Lord. Romans chapter 10, verse 8, it says this. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there's no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon Him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in Him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? Well, and then it goes on to say in verse 17, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. What's he saying here? This is how people get saved. A preacher is sent. They go and they preach the gospel. And faith comes into the heart of the hearer. Faith comes when they hear the preaching of the Word of God. They believe it because they heard it. And then they call on the name of the Lord or they confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, believing that His death was their death, that He was our substitute, that He was buried, that He rose again because of our justification. That's the process. And in that, they're surrendering to Christ. They're receiving Christ. And again, so Colossians 2, 6 says, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, 
so walk in him. In other words, faith is a vehicle. If you know how faith operates to receive Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you can pr apply the same law of faith, the same principles of faith to every area of your life, whether it is to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, whether it is to receive healing in your body or a uh, an answer to prayer, maybe you need wisdom or direction or to walk in sanctification or to just walk in the fullness of the blessing of Christ. All of that, everything that God's grace provides to you and me is accessed by faith. So when you understand that you use the same principles of faith to receive Christ, in that same way, you use those same principles to walk out every promise of God that's given to us in the scripture. Amen. So again, how did you receive Christ Jesus the Lord? Number one, you heard the word of God. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Number two, you believe the gospel of Christ from the heart. Romans chapter 10, 9 and 11. Number three, you confess Jesus as Lord calling on His name for salvation. Romans 10, 9, 10, verse 13. This, in this same way, we get established in the faith and we begin to walk as a lifestyle in Christ Jesus, hallelujah, rooted and built up in Him, established in the faith, abounding in it overflowing in it. How? With thanksgiving. Oh, hallelujah. Thanksgiving. So let's put this now. Let's apply it to your everyday life. Just like salvation. Now let's just reword it so you can understand how to do this in your everyday living for every promise of God. There's so many promises awaiting you. There's a rich treasure chest the new covenant is waiting for you to learn it, to know it, to access it, to walk in the reality of it. And when you do, no matter what kind of problems come your way, you'll walk in victory. Hallelujah. So if we're going to be established in the faith and begin to walk in Christ as a lifestyle, number one, faith for every area of your life comes by hearing the word of God every area. Number two, faith believes with the heart what God says as a present reality, regardless of what one feels or sees. Present reality. Don't forget that. You believe with the heart, no matter what you see, no matter what you feel, taste, smell. You believe God's word and you possess it as a present reality now, even before you've experienced it. And then number three, faith is released with corresponding action and confessing with the mouth what one believes. If you'll do those three things for every area of life, you find the promise of God, you read it, you get it in your heart, you believe it as a present tense reality, no matter what it looks like to the five physical senses. And number three, you release your faith by confessing what you believe and that you have it now and you act like it's true. Hallelujah. So let's look at this. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. One of my favorite passages of scripture. When it comes to what I do, <laughs> In the ministry, we do a lot of miracle festivals and we've been privileged to see thousands and thousands of people healed by the power of God. Many thousands, actually thousands in one meeting and one night because of this powerful gospel. So we've put it to the test. This stuff works, but look at uh, Acts chapter 14, verse 7. This illustrates this very well. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Acts 14, verse 7, and they were preaching the gospel there. That's called, talking about Paul and Barnabas. 
And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking, and Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet. And the man stood up. He leaped to his feet and he was healed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But I want you to notice, here's a man who's crippled from birth. He's had no hope of ever being able to walk. He grew up watching his neighbors, his neighbor uh, kids, the the kids of his age, walk, run around and play. And he, he couldn't participate because he was crippled, couldn't walk. As they were growing up and working jobs, he couldn't do that. He was crippled. When they were getting married and starting families, he couldn't do that. He was crippled. So he's just a beggar. He has no hope. He has zero development in his legs. He just has, his legs look like two sticks, two poles with skin wrapped around them. But one day, Paul and Barnabas are there. And what does the Bible say? They're preaching the gospel. And while he's hearing the message of the gospel, he he has faith to be healed. Faith comes into his heart. Paul recognized that faith. He says, get up and walk. And the man gets up and walks. But he received faith because he heard the message of the gospel. Joshua 1.8 says, keep this book of the law on your lips. Did you hear that? Don't let it get away from you. Keep it on your lips. Meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do all that's written therein. Then you'll make your way prosperous. Then you'll have good success. You'll be prosperous and you'll have good success. How? By putting the Word of God in your heart by meditating on it. So you're reading the Word, you're listening to the Word, you're thinking about the Word, you're muttering the Word, you're speaking it with your lips. It's in your mouth, it's in your ear, it's in front of your eyes, you're putting it in your mind, you're putting it in your heart. And when you do that, faith gets strong on the inside of you. The promise of God or the reality of your redemption gets much stronger from your perspective than the circumstance. You see yourself with the victory and you begin to experience it. Hallelujah. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Faith is of the heart, not the mind. Hallelujah. Notice Romans 10.10. It says, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness. With the heart one believes unto righteousness. Jesus said in Mark 11... Verse 23, Assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed, be thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he'll have whatever he says. But notice, believes with the heart. Praise God. Amen. The heart is the center of your being. Amen. You are a spirit being. You have a soul. You live in a body. First Thessalonians verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 23 describes you as a three-part being. Well, the part of you, the innermost part of you is your spirit. Hallelujah. And so with your spirit, you believe. Faith is a product of the human spirit that is full of the Word of God. Faith is a fruit of fellowship with the Father and with the Lord Jesus Christ in His Word. Hallelujah. You contact the spiritual realm with your spirit. You contact the mental and emotional realm with your soul. You contact the physical realm with your body. So if you're going to contact God, it's going to be with your spirit. With the heart one believes unto righteousness. He who doesn't doubt in his heart, but believes, Jesus said. You speak to the mountain. Don't doubt in your heart, but believe that what you say will be done. You'll have what you say. The part of you that's born again 
is your spirit. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So your spirit's brand new. Your mind needs to be renewed by the Spirit of God as you feed on the Word. And your body needs to be presented unto God, a living sacrifice. Spirit, soul, body. Hallelujah. Praise God. That was good teaching. We want to give you an opportunity right now to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. If you've never done that, Mark is going to lead you in a prayer right now to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands and surrender to him right now. Say this after me. Dear Father God, dear Father God, I come to you in Jesus' name. I come to you in Jesus' name. I acknowledge, I acknowledge my need of salvation. My need of salvation. And your word says, and your word says, if I confess with my mouth, if I confess with my that mouth, Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord, and believe in my heart, and believe in my heart, that you raised him from the dead, that you raised him from the dead, I will be saved. I will be saved. Well, Father. Well, Father, I believe. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. That Jesus died for my sins. And you did raise him from the dead. And you did raise him from the He's dead. He's alive right now. He's alive right now. In his physical body. In his physical body. Seated at your right hand. Seated at your right hand. And I confess. And I confess. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is my Lord. Is my Lord. He's my Savior. He's my Savior. I turn from sin. I turn from sin. Lord, I ask you to forgive me. Lord, I ask you to forgive me. Wash me clean. Wash me clean. In the blood you shed. Shed. In the blood you shed. I thank you for salvation thank now. Thank you for salvation now. I belong to you. I belong to you. Amen. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My friend, if you prayed that from your heart, we have good news for you. Your sins are forgiven. They're washed away. You're a brand new person. And Almighty God is your very own Father. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is so good. He loves you so much. Yeah. We're going to pray for you now to be healed. Hallelujah. His power is working in you. But let me just say, I want to encourage you to put into practice what you just heard, the teaching. Begin a lifestyle of believing and speaking out of your mouth the Word of God. Amen. Every day. Whether you feel like it or not, it becomes your lifestyle. Thank you, and you'll see incredible things happening in your life. In fact, you won't be as sick as often. Amen. You'll just live in a, in a, a, a continuous state of healing and health. You, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Because His Word is true. God doesn't want you to live from, I got to get healed today, and then you get healed, and then the next week you have to be healed again, and then the next week you have to be healed of something else. No. You can live a lifestyle of faith and healing, yeah. constant life flowing through you. Thank you, Lord. The power of God working in your life. Hallelujah. So just that's food for thought there for you. Amen. But right now, put your hand on the part of your body that's sick. Dear Lord, I thank you for your miraculous power. I thank you that it flows into your people now in the name of Jesus. We believe yes, we receive you, miracles Hallelujah. and healings. People who need operations, I thank you they'll be able to cancel those operations because they've been healed by your power in the name thank of you, Jesus. Lord. We thank you, Lord. All pain Hallelujah. goes, tumors go, growths go, eyesight is healed. People's breathing is better. We just thank you in Jesus' yes. name for miracle Hallelujah. after miracle after miracle. In Jesus' name, because you love your people. We thank you for compassion and mercy for them. Amen. 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 Praise God. If you God. prayed to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or you're experiencing a healing and a miracle in your body, we want to hear from you. Amen. So please call the number on your screen and let somebody know what God is doing in your life. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. We love you and we'll see you next time. Hello friends. We are very thrilled to offer this book that's now available that I've written. It's been a book that's been in my heart for many years now. It's called A Strong Foundation in Christ, Living a Purposeful and Successful Life from Now into Eternity. It covers in detail the six foundational doctrines of our Lord Jesus Christ 
that's listed in Hebrews chapter 6. Repentance from dead works, faith toward God, the doctrine of baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. But we go into detail about each doctrine. It will prove to be a blessing in your life if you read it and really put it into practice. It has more than 400 pages, but it is fast, easy reading. Unless you look up all the verses, it can be a book where you just want to read as you're laying in bed, or if you want to sit down at a desk and really study it, it will prove to be a blessing to you so that you can have a strong foundation under your feet in your walk with God. Buy the book today. Thank you.